this uh, exper uh, experience that it was taken to the other, other extreme in that process, very usurious rates and things like that. So we had a responsibility in the sense, because they're not allowed to take deposits, but banks lend them money, uh, which is again treated as a priority sector. So we have a responsibility in that basis. So then we brought in a cap that the interest rate, what you can do, the margin, of course, these are expensive because transaction cost, serving small ticket borrowers, transaction cost is high, default rate is also high. But then we brought in uh, a cap uh, that, you know, your margin could be, could be 10% uh, on, uh, on top. Because net interest margin in case of banks, you see is it about on an average 3%. But microfinance institutions, you have said 10%. Still, those loan rates will be reasonable. But given that, there is also possibility, that, you know, some from their own sources and all that, they must be really charging, uh, charging high rate. So we really would have to keep that, keep that balance. And essentially means the, there is a need on the credit side of different kinds of players with uh, uh, different kind of profile and different kind of risk appetite uh, really coming in and, and uh, working in that, in that process. Uh, my name is Nayan Saraf. I'm from Banking and Financial Services. My question is that uh, uh, since the, according to Basel uh, three norm, bank, banks have to keep some, uh, keep some liquidity in the future. And at the same time, according to the RBI policies, they have to keep the CRR and the SLR. So would RBI uh, reduce the CRR or scrap the CRR in the future or not? Now, if I answer your question, your all other friends will get bored. So, uh, you know, but this is a technical question that you are asking. Uh, but, you know, CRR is not high. A CRR is 4% of, of the liability of the banking sector. We had a situation where CRR was 15, 16, 17%, so that is quite moderate. Uh, at the same time, it's a monetary policy, uh, policy tool, uh, so that we can leave it aside. But having said that, under Basel III, liquidity requirement is quite exacting. You know, that high liquidity they really they would have to provide. So what the Reserve Bank has done in that process, that we are reducing the statutory, which is basically a secondary liquidity ratio, uh, which has been brought down from a high level of 40% of the liabilities uh, to about 20 and half percent of the liability. And then we have said banks that you can dip into that statutory 21.5% of your liability by two, another 2% 2 point under the marginal standing facility. Uh, that daily liquidity that we are providing on that basis. Of course, little penal rate is there. It's repo rate plus one percentage point. So apart from that, to meeting the LCR, that is your question, liquidity coverage ratio under Basel III, so they can dip into another five percent for maintaining, maintaining uh, LCR. So the provisions are being made, so one thing. So where we are enabling from that side, because basically that we are trying to improve the liquidity attribute of the statutory liquidity ratio which was impounded uh, with the central bank. At the same time, the objective of this policy is that the banks should also put their house in order. So they should also have to build up some li liquidity because that is the objective of, of, of policy. Uh, so in that process, that is working fine now, that they would be able to once it is being rolled out, so they should be able to meet their liquidity requirement. But in due time, that we would have to see uh, how, how, it, how it works out. Sam yeah. Devalina, once again from PGP2. I have one more question. Yeah, sure, sure, yeah. Uh, so, uh, RBI is in charge of uh, issuing rupee, uh, rupee notes. Mahatma Gandhi is the face of Indian rupee. Is there any possibility of change? Why you don't like, uh, globally everybody likes Mahatma there are, Gandhi? I, there uh, are several Facebook rallies like mm. regarding their favorite personality to be, uh, I mean, imprinted on the note. So we just, I'm just curious to know, is there any possibility for those changes? Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, sir. No. Uh, sir, no. Dr. Subhash Chandra Bose would be my favorite. Yeah. <coughs> no, no, because, you know, there are... Uh, you know, the security features keep, keep changing. Uh, security features in the note keep changing, note uh, other things keep changing. Uh, because this is a country of diversity. Uh, you want to do something is working, then 10 people would be against, 12 would be in favor, you know. Uh, it can open up a lot of other kinds of frictions and, and, and things like that. Uh, uh, but, uh, but my short answer to your question would be that we keep, you know, examining. Uh, that can it be a little different and all that, but uh, who should be uh, on, the, on the note uh, that, that we don't know. But I think uh, I like the Indian currency 
uh, very well. So, <laughs> Sir Vishwadi from PGP One. Sir, do you think this Make in India campaign will make the rupee more stronger in longer run? Which uh, one, sorry? Make this in Make in India campaign will make uh, the rupee more stronger in longer run. And what do you think the role of RBI in achieving that uh, project of Mr. Sri Narendra Modi? Sorry, say that second question. So what will be the role of Reserve Bank of India in achieving that uh, goal of Mr. Narendra Modi in this thing? No, no, because, you know, the uh, Reserve Bank, again, our owner is Government of India. Uh, you know, we also uh, try to help government uh, in that uh, in in that sense. It's, it's a government policy which has been implemented. Of course, we have given a particular uh, uh, particular responsibility. The way you know, government wing, you just see collector is there, then he has a different responsibility. SP is there; it's a different uh, responsibility. That doesn't mean there are different organs. They, they are again part of the same organ and trying to achieve the same uh, same objective. So now that if you are doing uh, kind of going in for production, that we would have to see that, uh, you know, credit is available. Uh, if an entrepreneur wants to put something, the credit is available. Whether he or she is getting the land or not getting this kind of a thing uh, or uh, other kinds of things, so these are things that the government really would have to resolve, whether he's getting a clearance or not. But we would have to see that, you know, credit is available in a competitive rate. And to do that, obviously, that you have to control inflation. As I said that, you know, what is interest rate? Interest rate is a some implicit real interest rate plus inflation added to that. Uh, because without reducing inflation, you cannot reduce uh, interest rate in that process. So once you do that, then you have also lower interest rate, the interest burden on the corporate would be less. And if it is inflation, your exchange rate also depreciate, isn't it? Because uh, you know the inflation differential, uh, as you read in the textbook and all that, if you control uh, inflation, your currency also becomes uh, strong. Uh, in that process. And if you produce more domestically and export, so that means your productivity goes up. In productivity goes up, so then there is a pressure on the exchange rate to appreciate, uh, to accommodate that productivity. So all that will fall into place. So these are all in theory, uh, but in practice, how fast we roll out, how we implement, all that would, would depend on that process. And as you have seen uh, from the RBI side that we have taken uh, these steps to uh, see, uh, that at least our basic mandate that on the inflation side, that we see that you know it comes under control, and banks get uh, well capitalized so that adequate when the credit requirement is there, they should be able to uh, dispense dispense credit. Uh, so all that we are uh, taking steps. Uh, good evening, sir. I am uh, P. B. Shruti from Banking and Finance first year. Uh, my question to you is um, that. Whenever we change a monetary policy, it takes a lot of time to uh, actually see the effects on the Indian economy. Why is that so? And what are the factors which lead, in, uh, lead that? See, monetary policy acts uh, with long and variable lags. That, that is what uh, we have read. Please sit down. Uh, that in the textbook, and that is what is the empirical, uh, empirical you know, examination also would, would, would suggest. Uh, so it takes time, because directly it cannot control. Because monetary policy, you change something, you see inflation, it has no direct link. So it has to go through different uh, um, intermediaries, isn't it? So you have water here, there's a pump which is pumping water, uh, but there is no water in the tap. Because if there are gridlocks, if there are blockages in between, so obviously the water doesn't uh, reach your tap. And it takes time, because it's not instantaneous, uh, isn't it? So then it, it, it takes time. So these are kind of a lag. So what we are trying to do, that trying to smoothen uh, the transmission blocks uh, which, which, which are there. So that's why we keep, uh, you know, keep um, encouraging. Uh, I would not say because we cannot force them to reduce uh, lending rate. We say that, okay, I have reduced my policy rate. We should see the banks uh, should also reduce their lending rate. So once that happens, so obviously, uh, you know, your investment takes place. Then the economy comes up. You know, it, 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 it takes, uh, takes time. So there are, there are lags. Uh, in that in that process, and we are trying to smooth those transmission uh, channels. Sir, I do understand that there are lags uh, in the system and all those things, but uh, sir, the lag, the delay uh, that in India we are facing is actually too high. What is RBI doing in order to uh, lessen that uh, lag? No delay because uh, the delay not because of monetary policy. Because monetary policy is the easiest thing to do because uh, you know you have to raise interest rate or you have to bring down uh, interest rate. As of now, the governor is in charge; he can do it. So there is a, uh, no problem from from uh, from that side. But I'm saying there are other 
you know, there are real sector issues uh, where the Reserve Bank has also only a limited, uh, limited role in that, in that process. So we are trying to make uh, the banking system more, uh, more competitive. We are trying to creep the stability uh, of, the, of the banking sector. As I said, please sit down. Uh, that in my lecture, that if you have unstable banking sector, then forget about growth. You do whatever to repair uh, that uh, that uh, banking banking sector. You know, if you read uh, Reinhardt and Rogoff, uh, it this time different because uh, that's a classic book again. That you see that following financial crisis, it takes several years for growth really to come back. That's the evidence we get from history. Then you have to create stability. You have to create a balance uh, in that in that process. Uh, so we are making effort. So you can give us A plus, or if I can give us C minus, it is up to you, the kind of judgment you'll have. Yeah, thank you. I'm sure many of my students will agree with me. Why is it that education loan is so costly compared to other loans? See, education loan, one thing is there, that I said that the overall interest rate uh, in, the, in the economy is high. So that is, that is one part. And uh, education loan, the, by the way, now, which is much more liberal uh, than education loan like US. So that is what people are saying next crisis is, is coming, coming through that because a uh, lot of kids are indebted and all that. Earlier US you get a job, but now that's not the, not the case. So that's coming as a big, uh, big issue. And uh, here what we have done that in up to four lakhs, I think it is collateral free uh, loan. So beyond that, then you get, get uh, you know, kind of a thing, a loan you get. Of course, the interest rate, I agree, uh, is, is uh, uh, relatively little, uh, little higher, but then it is related to job market. But this facility is also misused uh, in 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 many places because uh, uh, it's not Manipal, but in other places that you see that uh, uh, there are a lot of private educational institute mushrooming overnight and linking it in such a way that everybody tuition fee becomes like four lakh. You know that is uh, kind of kind of fee that you put it, and uh, and. Uh, and uh, the people they're churning out, they're not employable. So there's no em employment uh, in, in that process. Uh, so now, despite that, uh, that the banking sector is staring at a huge non-performing assets, maximum non-performing assets are there. But we do, um, we do um, recognize that, you know, taking kind of steps. Many places it could not be willful default. But there are other things, uh, there, there are other, um, uh, you know, sociological problems also, because you take as parents, uh, as the guarantor. Uh, Sometimes also kids move out, they don't bother about the parent. The poor parents stay back home. Uh, how they will service uh, that, that loan? That also becomes a, uh, becomes a problem, because, you know, you're a responsible child or irresponsible child, so then also becomes, becomes an, there are different kinds of, I'm saying, it's a complex, uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a complex uh, issue. So then we are trying because at the board level, we've been discussing that. And at the board level, we are taking a lot of steps and examining that. And one of the gentlemen was the director, IIT, Khadakpur, was in our uh, board. Uh, so we have set up a committee, internal committee under that. Then to see uh, that how, sometimes out of carelessness, you don't, don't pay. So how do you bring in repayment? See, if the loans don't get uh, repaid, so obviously the banks is not going to, uh, you know, survive in, in that whole process. So we are trying to see that how we increase the repayment uh, side uh, on, on that side. The other thing would be still, if you think that the interest rates are high, so subsidy elements would have to come in. And once subsidy element comes in, the government would have to, would have to come into that because uh, you see like agriculture, there's an interest rate subvention uh, which, is, which, is, which is there because whatever may be the base rate, uh, you know, 4%, uh, suppose the central government gives, state government gives some sub subvention, some kind of a subsidy really would have to would have to come in. So it's a complex issue, and we are quite sensitive uh, to to that uh, that part. But there is a need for discipline on 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 both sides. Uh, so that I'm, we are saying that some education, if you bring in the passport requirement, that somebody passport also uh, that you have access to that, you know the number. That itself would be a great deterrent. Sometimes people even, if I am not reminded, sometimes I have taken loan, I don't pay. It is not that I don't want to pay. Nobody is asking. And the other thing, and uh, my public sector banks would excuse me, that, that follow-up is also not there at, at the retail level because they are hard-pressed with so many other things. So they are not changing these borrowers going here and there and things like that. Uh, so there are different uh, complex, uh, complex issues involved in that. Obviously, as you know, if the default probability is high, interest rate would be higher uh, on, on any kind of lending that you are doing. But this is a major issue and education, cost of education has gone up. Uh, so we are trying 
to how to make it more competitive and uh, bring in little more credit discipline uh, in in education loan in your speech you mentioned that uh, financial stability is one of the major respons maintaining financial stability is one of the major responsibility of a central bank but uh, with central bank central banks around the world going for unconventional policy measures and using them quite aggressively isn't it driving the world towards financial instability and if it is doesn't it make sense to have a governing body that regulates all these banks yeah then uh, you could be the next governor of reserve bank of india i think <laughs> see no sir a regulatory body uh, no no i'm i'm coming to your i'm coming to your uh, question uh, because please sit down uh see monetary policy is conducted with a domestic objective okay because in the reserve bank when i am doing my monetary policy i am seeing what is the domestic inflation i am not seeing that what is happening in china what kind of impact it will have or uh, uh, impact it will have uh, in us because in my mandate that is not there that you do monetary policy for monetary stability in india it doesn't say what would happen on that on that part but having said that it is a deeper question that you see that on exchange rate there is a international body which is the international monetary fund the imf is there because of this competitive devaluation and all those things are happening and uh, uh, you know uh, so under value over value of exchange rate so you have a international referee in that process which prods you but nobody really prods you in terms of the monetary uh, cooperation because it is on the domestic side so at so if advanced countries do something isn't it so this needs i catch cold here because it is the rupee is coming under pressure is not because in indian thing india things are uh, improving and the outlook is improving but our currency is depreciating uh, because china has uh, devalued and china has devalued with you know then or us interest rate is going up capital is flowing back on that process so there is a need for greater cooperation uh, among the international central banks but we are not yet there uh, so this is a view is again expressed by my boss uh, that is dr rajan uh, who is as you know is an international figure uh, because uh, then what he says it carries a uh, lot of lot of weight because people listen to him and uh, if i i and you say that people are not going to listen to that so uh, you know so that is there but we are not yet there and uh, now uh, within four walls that i also attend sometimes the bis meetings uh, where you know the central bank uh, governors are there and uh, uh, so i go sometime with my boss then you are sitting there then one of the emerging market central bank governors asked to ben bananke and uh, then sir governor that you know we central banks that you have read, read our monetary policy statement it starts with global what happened to us what happened to eu uh, and what kind of impact it would have then then we talk of domestic do you people think like that when you do your monetary policy uh, you know perhaps not uh, but of late a little bit of thinking has come uh, that they should also focus a little bit so that is how imf is taking that kind of a role that i said the spill over and spill back that if systemically important countries take certain monetary policy action it has a spill over impact and spill over impact then you say how do i care it is a spill over impact my neighbor is getting affected because if i have uh, sewage i put into my neighbor isn't it i i am very comfortable i have garbage i throw it into the road because my house is very nicely kept i don't care what happens but it spills back disease comes back to you so that is how the argumentation has been put that you guys are putting there but it is going to hit you because in that process if the emerging market slow down obviously because as i said the interlinked global world so the advanced countries also will 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 slow down uh, but we are not yet there uh, to have kind of international referee uh, that which also evaluates uh, your your monetary policy and brings about that kind of coordination but there is a kind of a talk and greater recognition uh, that we should also not only look at a domestic objective see uh, that what kind of impact it can have externally that's it So thank you very much thank you for your insights into the after crisis agenda of the CBI and the policies that help move through these trying times and it's the RBI uh, i'm sure the students have benefited listening to you about the monetary policy the framework the targets 
and the inflation targeting. Thank you very much for your patient answering as well. May I now request Dr. Ramdas Pai to felicitate Mr. Deepak Mohanty with a memento. We appreciate your time, Mr. Mohanty. Kindly accept this as a token of our gratitude. With this, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the end of the day's event. Talent, endurance, attitude, and motivation is what a team stands for. There is a team that has been working for this day. On behalf of Team TAPME, I extend our sincere thanks to our guest and speaker, Mr. Deepak Mohanty, for his consent to be with us and having given us his valuable time and advice. Thank you, thank you, sir, for sharing your enriched experience. <laughs> Sincere thanks to Dr. Ramdas Pai for being with us today. We thank you, sir, for your constant guidance and support. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we also have with us Dr. Vishal, the Deputy Commissioner and District Magistrate Udupi and Mr. Anamalai, the SP, who are here with us for the evening. We appreciate your constant support and guidance, sir. Thank you, Dr. Natarajan, for being the front runner at TAPME and emulating leadership that is truly transformational. Thanks to the team of faculty members and the staff of TAPME for their continuous and sincere contribution always. A special word of mention of the facilities team headed by Mr. Nayak and Mr. Anand Pai for their relentless efforts in handling all the back-end responsibilities of the event. We also thank the executives of the Syndicate Bank and the staff members for their constant support for all our events through TAPME. Thanks to the members of the press, distinguished officials, and guests from the Manipal University, and all the dignitaries present here. Your presence is truly appreciated. Most importantly, thank you students for your patient listening. We are sure you always have a takeaway every time you attend a lecture. This is Dr. Sina Biju signing off. Have a lovely evening. Stay blessed. <laughs>